What happened before that? When I was thinking about her, she was never thinking about me. What happened before that? When I would give her gifts, she would shun them. What happened before that? When I was wanting to have sex with her, she rejected me. What happened before that? When I wanted to go into business, she told me everything I wanted to do was stupid. You got to go to that place because you haven't released those emotions. She didn't hurt me. And then you rehearsed your whole entire line of what you're going to say when she came to the house. Because you can't have organic conversation because you didn't release it. Because how many times do I have to do that every day? Knowing that if I go to sleep, my subconscious is going to say, remember that molestation? Bring it up. Today, I want to come to you for all the people that are really facing your internal struggle. Uh, many even dismissive avoidant people. Um, when you're facing your internal struggle to feel like you should not cry, you should not be emotional, you should always suck it up, you should always feel like nobody has the power over you. And I want to get the misconception out the way. When someone has power over you, they make you pretend that nothing is wrong. When someone has the power over you, they make you pretend like you didn't hurt them. They make you pretend like you don't need to cry. When somebody does me wrong and I express to them, I don't like that. What are you doing? I, I do not. I, no, I don't like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Some might see it as disrespectful. Some might see it as weak, especially if you lean toward the, the side. No, nah, man, bro, you hurt my feelings, man. I have no problem saying that. I have not to a man, not to a female. Yo, you hurt my feelings. You, you definitely, you scarred my feelings. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm hold me down, but you scarred my feelings. See, when you have, when somebody has power over you, they make you pretend like you don't. And you think that you're being tough, you think you're being hard, but you're not being tough, you're not being hard. The reality is what's happening is, you're trying to do the exact opposite of what you feel. Feelings were given to you, God gave you feelings. You're not supposed to abide by them, but you're not supposed to ignore them either. If you ignored your gut feeling, which your gut actually has a mind of its own, it really does. Like not just metaphorically, it really does. Your gut has a mind, it has a brain, just like the brain inside your head. If you ignore your gut feeling, what will happen? If you ignore that feeling that you have, my spirit feels heavy. My eye, something doesn't seem right. That's your spirit. Your spirit already knows what's gonna happen. That, that's your spirit, it went before you. So when you ignore these different things, you, you ignore your gut feeling, your brain feeling, you ignore your heart, you ignore your spirit being ahead of you, your discernment, then you're doing the exact opposite of what you're supposed to learn or face in that moment. The title of this video is Cry It Out For A Reason. Obviously, for all my Christians, you know, weeping may endure for a night, but joy may come in the morning. At the end of the day, when you're able to assess something that's happened in your life, when you're able to assess, listen, I don't care how many times you cry about it. Don't spend too much time on it. Start to heal that process to heal what's happened. But it's okay to get to that point. If you need to cry, you need to cry. I've cried many times. It has not taken away from my strength. <laughs> what's made me stronger is the fact that I've assessed it. I've honed in on that problem cried it out because the worst thing that I want to do is sit here and gain such a false vast amount of knowledge to think that I'm fooling somebody else by saying you didn't hurt me you didn't do much to me I don't really care about that I don't care about what you're doing I don't care about that. that's fake that's false so now you come across a person like me or a person that's intellectual a person that's wise a person that's smart and you pretend and you think it's working, but the reality is you're looking foolish. I said it in one of my videos, you'll never fool a person who's already done something that you wanna do. You sit humble yourself and ask them how they did it. You're not gonna go to Tony Robbins and say, yeah, I got a million dollars, I got this, I got, he's not gonna give a crap. If you went to Tony Robbins and said, please, I only have a million dollars. Can you teach me what I'm, can you, I, I just give you, I'll take 30 seconds, 30 seconds of time. I will, I'll pay you for 30 seconds right now. Show, please just show me something. You've crossed another barrier because you're not pretending. When you pretend like no one's hurt you, pretend like something's not in your way and your blockage, 
or you pretend something is not blocking you or blocking your heart from the next moment, let alone, let alone the next year, you lose. They don't lose. And you think somebody has power over you because they've made you cry, they made you hurt. No, they have power over you because my pride is greater than the feelings, than the emotion that was built in me. You're not gonna be your body. You're not gonna be your mind. You're not gonna overtake a system or a rule that was implanted in your body. You need to understand, humble yourself and say, this is what I feel right now. And this is what I want to assess. My family member passed away. I'll go ahead and cry this out. I'm gonna focus on the thoughts. Listen to me, I know this is gonna sound left to many people. My heart was broken. I'm gonna focus on everything that hurt about that relationship before I got cheated on because it's gonna propel me to release it out of my body. It's gonna propel me to release the pain. She cheated, what happened before that? She abused me mentally, what happened before that? She abused me physically, what happened before that? I felt like I was last, what happened before that? I caught her texting other men, what happened before that? She would always put things before me, what happened before that? When we got married, she never took my last name, what happened before that? When I was thinking about her, she was never thinking about me, what happened before that? When I would give her gifts, she would shun them, what happened before that? When I was wanting to have sex with her, she rejected me what happened before that when I wanted to go into business she told me everything I wanted to do was stupid what happened before that you got to go to that place you have to go because if you don't you're holding in the things that are causing you to stay in that mindset that says if you come back I'll be okay with that you have to be principle led let your emotions lead you to expressing in a safe manner, but then come back to the principle and say, okay, now that that's out of my system, how am I going to assess the next part of my life? You know, first and foremost, with many people that cheat, once a cheater, always a cheater. If there's a benefit for you of staying, if that person finally got their stuff together, if you know that you're good, your SMV, your sexual market value is good enough for you, go out, go out the house and do what you need to do, you're setting yourself up in a place where you're understanding principle. It's better for the kids that I'm here. I'm not saying stay for the kids, but I'm saying it's better for the kids that I'm here. She's learned her lesson. She's not gonna do this again. And even if she did, I'm good if I leave. This, this is the type of thinking you can have if you let those emotions out. But if you don't, the type of thinking you're gonna have subconsciously, which you won't tell them, but everything you're saying with your forgiveness and accepting them back is gonna say for the simple fact that you don't wanna be alone, come back. I'll forgive you, I'll get over it. Because you haven't released those emotions. She didn't hurt me. She can't hurt me. She, when she come over, and then you rehearsed your whole entire line of what you're gonna say when she came to the house. Cause you can't have organic conversation cause you didn't release it. Gotta release it. Cry it out. Focus on it. Focus on everything that made you feel that way. Then you can focus on the good times, focus on the bad and say, at the end of the day, I'm glad I got that experience. I'm so glad I went through that. But when you don't do that, you don't focus on the area to get the emotion out, then you pretend like nothing's bothering you. And that's where those bitter people come in. I One thing I hated, one thing I hated when I worked is saying, thank you so much for calling, you reached on. How may I help you? And you see on the other screen, somebody's just bitter. Yeah, I tried that. Um, you know, I just, maybe it's this, maybe, I, I think you should do your job this way. Maybe it's just like, you know, it's so deep rooted that you don't have time to help them right away because one is your job. And two, that nothing you do is ever going to make them happy or change. Those are the bitter people that pretend like nothing has ever hurt them. And you end up looking stupid because you're not a joyous, wonderful person. Everybody used to tell me, you alpha, you walk into the room, and when you walk into the room as an alpha, you just sit, your energy is one way, and then that's so not true. You walk into the room, if you make people laugh, you're not less of first. If you make people feel good, you're not less of first. You're not less an alpha because you're just, although it's attitude, it's mental attitude. 
assessing your feelings, guys, and realize and understand how to move on is your attitude. So your attitude gets better. I've attracted many women and I've attracted many friends and many other relationships just by being who I am. But I can't be funny and kind and cool and dope if I keep pretending like nobody hurt me. Because how many times do I have to do that every day? Knowing that if I go to sleep, my subconscious is going to say, all right, bring that dream. Bring those thoughts that I've piled on down. Remember that molestation? Bring it up. Remember that hurt? Bring it up. Remember that fear? Bring it up. That fear of her losing or you losing her? Bring it up. And you wake up and you're like, dang, I didn't get no sleep. Because all that stuff packed on your subconscious is just there riding you because you won't just deal with it. And to be honest, therapists get paid so much money because people don't do this. You wouldn't need therapy if you were just honest with yourself. What you sow in tears, you will reap in joy. What you sow in tears, you will reap in joy. The tears that you cry make an imprint, a spiritual imprint, a reward that God says, okay, I see you're crying. Not only will I fix this, but I will give you something that will make you feel better. But if you're not praying and you have no one to talk to and you have no one to present your feelings or your thoughts to and you pretend like nothing's ever hurting you, it will drive you to do some insane things. Because the guy who shot the girl in the head because she broke up with him, it did not start with her. It started with the last five girls that left him because he was so damn clingy. And he was so clingy because he didn't have the mind of abundance to say, I am me. Hear me roar. I am me. I'm going to do whatever I have to do because I'm me. It's not another me and it will never be. Even if I have kids, it'll never be another me. But he didn't tell himself that. He got upset and this girl was better than the rest. So if you're not going to be with me, you're not going to be with anybody. So I'm going to go ahead and pop you. And for what? Because you should have been dealing with that five chicks ago. You should have been dealing with those issues five women ago. You should have been telling yourself that this is how I feel. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to cry it out. And I have no shame doing it. Listen, trust your gut. If your gut says, man, I got to shed this out, shed it out. But don't be hiding that stuff and pretending like everything is all good because you're only going to hurt you and you will hurt somebody else with all that stuff you got piled up on you. All right? Don J. Luminous Horizon. Shedding light on limited perceptions as always. Be lit.